today I would be talking about the ultrasound guided fascia iliaca compartment uh, block, which is a very simple technique, uh, a very simple uh, block uh, to give. And at times it's been also very commonly given in the emergency settings. So I'll initially be discussing about the anatomy of the fascia iliaca compartment block, followed by what are the various approaches to give this block. So the fascia iliaca compartment block, like I said, it is a superficial, simple and a safe block and is associated with very low incidence of adverse effects. It was first described way back in 1989 by Dalens and colleagues. And since it's a facial plane block, the local anesthetic in this is injected not close to a particular nerve, but in a plane or a facial plane. So what do you mean by facial plane where this local anesthetic is deposited? So facial planes are potential spaces which are devoid of any fat and are separated from muscle by a layer of loose connective tissue. These form sheets for the nerves and vessels and local anesthetic which is injected within these potential spaces, they seek the path of least resistance and with the aim that maybe they go and target the nerves which are going through those facial planes. So when we talk about the fascia iliaca compartment block, what is it? In this, the local anesthetic, like I said, is deposited within the fascia iliaca compartment. Now, what is this fascia iliaca compartment? The fascia iliaca compartment is a potential space which lies between the fascia iliaca, which is anteriorly, and the iliacus and the psoas muscle posteriorly, or the iliopsoas, which we commonly call it. The fascia laca is laterally attached to the iliac crest and medially it is attached to the fascia overlying the psoas muscle. So this is a potential space between this fascia lying anteriorly and the iliopsoas muscle posteriorly. So by injecting the local anesthetic in the fascia laca compartment, what are we actually targeting? We are targeting the three main nerves of the lumbar plexus, which is the femoral nerve, the lateral femoral cutaneous, and the obturator nerve. These are the three nerves which pass through this compartment. And by depositing the local anesthetic in this compartment, we are mainly targeting these three nerves. So coming on to the femoral nerve, the femoral nerve, we all know it arises from the L234 nerve roots. Following this, it descends through the fibers of the psoas major, before passing distally between the psoas and the iliacus muscle. And it goes behind the inguinal ligament, leaves the pelvis. And here beneath the inguinal ligament, we all know it lies anterior to the iliopsoas muscle and lateral to your femoral vessels, which is your femoral vein and artery. Then the lateral cutaneous, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, it is a purely sensory nerve and it arises from L2, L3 nerve roots goes down towards the iliac crest, the anterior inferior iliac spine, and passes behind the inguinal ligament. And it goes laterally, and mainly it is a sensory nerve. It supplies a small area on the lateral aspect of the thigh. The major part of the anteromedial aspect is supplied by your femoral nerve. The obturator nerve again arises from the second to the fourth lumbar nerves, goes down, it goes medially towards the obturator foramen and it mainly supplies a small area on the medial aspect of the thigh. So when we are giving a fascia lacquer compartment block, the local anesthetic by spreading to, towards these three main nerves of the lumbar plexus, once it spreads here, it would mainly provide analgesia to most of your anterior, medial and lateral aspect of the thigh. So here, basically, you need to inject a large enough volume on the local anesthetic under the fascia iliaca, which leads to blockage of these three nerves of the lumbar plexus, which lie within the compartment at the proximal end of the anatomical course. It is important to remember whenever we talk about the facial plane blocks, these are all volume blocks. So what is important is you need to give good volume of local anesthetic and these are mainly analgesic blocks. So you can go down on the concentration because these are mainly analgesic blocks, but give a good volume so that there is enough spread to all the nerves which you are targeting. Now, what are the main indications of fascia iliaca compartment block? It is mainly used for providing perioperative analgesia for fracture, neck or shaft of femur, anterior thigh knee surgeries, 
analgesia for hip surgeries, above knee amputations, can also be used for plaster application in children with femoral fractures and for tunica pains. The contraindications, like for any other block, if the patient refuses for these blocks or there is an allergy to local anesthetic, then these are contraindicated if there is a crush injury at or near the site of in injection, inflammation or infection over the injection site, any pre-existing neural deficits in the block distribution, and if there is a concern for the development of compartment syndrome. Now, having talked about the basic anatomy of uh, the fascia lacca compartment block, ultrasound guided fascia lacca compartment block has two main approaches. One is the supra inguinal and the other is the infra inguinal. So if you're giving a block above the inguinal ligament, it is a supra inguinal and below that you have the infra inguinal. Now, before giving any block, your general preparation and equipment needs to be well in place. Since we are using an ultrasound, I'm talking about ultrasound guided block. So you need, of course, an ultrasound machine. And since it's a superficial block, so you would need a linear probe for this and linear high frequency probe. Then your all the drugs and equipments should be in place. Your sterile dressings. If you're using a catheter, then peripheral nerve block catheter set syringes, local anesthetics, your sterile drapes. So everything needs to be kept ready. And of course, your, we, whenever we give any block, all your emergency drugs and equipments have to be in place and the patients have to be adequately monitored. Now, first about the ultrasound guided infrainguinal fascia lacca compartment block, what would be the patient and the probe position? The patient would lie supine on the table. The leg can be slightly abducted you use a linear ultrasound probe for this and it should be uh, the block procedure should all be done under sterile conditions. Now the probe is placed like we place for a femoral nerve block. The linear ultrasound probe is placed transversely just below the inguinal crease and the direction of needle entry would be from the lateral to the medial side. Now once we place the probe here, just below the inguinal crease transversely, what do we see? This is the zonoanatomy which we will have on our screen. From medial to lateral, you would have the femoral vessels. We have the, uh, the common mnemonic, which we all remember is VAN. Medial to lateral, you have the femoral vein, the femoral artery. And just lateral to the femoral artery, you have this hyperechoic femoral nerve sandwiched between the artery and this big belly of muscle, which is your iliopsoas muscle. So just above the iliopsoas muscle, this fascia which we have is your fascia iliaca. So this is our plane of interest where we would be depositing the drug in your infrainguinal fascia iliaca compartment block. Above this triangular muscle which is arising is your sartorius muscle. So your needle will enter from the lateral to the medial side targeting this plane just above the iliopsoas between the iliopsoas and the sartorius muscle to give your infrainguinal fascia iliaca compartment block. So here I have a small video showing the technique block technique of infrainguinal fascia iliaca compartment block. So here we place the probe transversely just below the inguinal crease. You can see the vein, femoral vein, the pulsatile femoral artery and lateral to that you have the femoral nerve. As we move the probe laterally, so this is just showing the difference between the vein and the artery. So you can see the pulsatile artery, the femoral nerve. As you move your probe laterally, you can see this large belly of muscle which is your iliopsoas muscle and above the ilios and here you have the sartorius muscle and just above the iliopsoas this plane would be your fascia iliaca plane compartment. So this is our area of interest where we would be depositing the drug. So for depositing the drug or for injecting the local anesthetic the need you use your eco uh, we commonly use uh, ecogenic needles generally 80 to 100 mm in size and uh, the needle is inserted from lateral to medial direction and always do we do an in plane for this so the advantage of in plane technique is you can visualize the needle throughout the, its entire course so here we are entering from the lateral towards the medial side so this is the lateral part of the screen and you can see the needle entering so the first 
pop that you hear, feel is of the fascia lata. The second pop is of the fascia iliaca. And as we enter the fascia iliaca, you deposit the local anesthetic. So you can see the drug nicely spreading here, the iliopsoas going down. And you should have a good medial to lateral spread of the local anesthetic. Since it's a volume block, generally you, we use around 30 ml of 0.2% rupivacaine or 0.25% bupivacaine. So what are the problems with infrainguinoid facial aca block? Like I said, it's a plain block. You need to good, use good volumes. Recommended is around 30 to 40 ml of 0.2% rupivacaine or 0.25% bupivacaine. Now, the problems with infrainguinal is that even with injection of large volumes, not much local anesthetic travels up the pelvic brim to block more than the femoral nerve. At times, it blocks the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So with the infrainguinal approach, the femoral nerve is blocked most of the times. The second common nerve to be blocked is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. But the obturator nerve lies too medially near the medial border of the psoas. And with this approach, the spread medially towards the obturator nerve is limited due to the barrier which is formed by the iliopectineal fascia. So this was an MRI study which was conducted by Svensson et al. And it was published in 2015, which evaluated the spread of local anesthetic after ultrasound-guided infrainguinal fascia iliaca compartment block. And following the study, they, they gave the drug and then they did a, an MRI evaluation to see the spread. And the authors found that the femoral nerve and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve were consistently blocked, but there was no evidence of spread medially or cranially that could lead to a reliable block of the obturator nerve with the infrainguinal approach to the fascia iliaca compartment block. So, the there was the introduction of this supra-inguinal approach to the fascia lacquer compartment block. What is the difference? In this, the needle tip is advanced to a point deep to the fascia lacquer. The compartment is the same, but the drug insertion is superior to the inguinal ligament so that the local anesthetic mainly stays trapped within the pelvis. So the idea here is it provides a more extensive spread and a more reliable blockade of the obturator nerve and greater pain relief and reduced opioid consumption. So why does the supraingoinal fascia lacca compartment block do better? The, there is enough evidence in literature to suggest that the analgesia is better with CFE or the supraingoinal approach as compared to the infrainguinal. Why? Because by depositing the local anesthetic closer to the relevant nerves in a more proximal location, there is a higher likelihood of blocking the articular branches before they leave the femoral and the obturator nerve. And secondly, there is better chance of getting the obtur uh, obturator nerve because there is a more cranial deposition of the local anesthetic leading to a better spread under the fascia iliaca with concomitant spread medially towards the obturator nerve. So this was another uh, study which was uh, done by Vermillion et al. in which they hypothesized that the supraingoinal approach to the fascia iliaca would result in a more consistent block of the three target nerves. So they, uh, the authors, they did a randomized control trial in 10 healthy volunteers in whom both the infrainguinal and the supraanguinal blocks were performed on the left and the right side of each volunteer. And 40 ml of lignocaine was injected with each approach. And what they found was that after the supraanguinal fascia lacca block, 80% of the volunteers had a complete sensory block of the medial anterior and the lateral region of the thigh as compared to only 30% after an infrainguinal approach. Now, what for giving the supraingoinal block, again, we use a linear probe. The preparation remains the same. The patient position is again supine. The difference is where we place the probe. Now, how is the probe placed? For giving the supraingoinal fascia iliaca compartment block, a linear high-frequency transducer is first placed over the anterior superior iliac spine in the craniocaudal direction. Then, so this is the head end of the patient, the left part of the screen, this is the foot end. And here you have the anterior superior iliac spine. And the linear probe is just placed close to the anterior superior iliac spine. It is gently moved medially, turning the cranial part of the probe towards the umbilicus, keeping the probe perpendicular to the inguinal ligament. 
the needle is inserted from the caudal to the cranial direction in plane to the ultrasound probe for giving the supraingoinal. So this is how you place the probe for a supraingoinal approach. It is placed just perpendicular to the inguinal ligament. The cranial part of the probe would face towards your umbilicus and your needle direction from, would be from caudal to cranial. Now, once we place the probe in this direction, what do we see? Here we see the anterior inferior iliac spine on the lower part. Just above the anterior inferior iliac spine, this huge belly of muscle is your iliacus muscle. And above this, you can see two muscles. So towards the foot end is your sartorius. Towards the head end is your internal oblique muscle, the abdominal muscle. And this is the bow tie appearance. So you see this bow tie sign. For, the bow tie is formed by the internal oblique in the cephalad part and the sartorius caudad. Below that, you have the iliacus muscle. And this is the plane. This is your fascia iliaca compartment where you need to deposit the drug. Impo another important landmark is this deep circumflex iliac artery. This deep circumflex iliac artery lies just above your fascia iliaca compartment. So this act, it is important to visualize this artery. So whenever you're depositing the drug, the drug needs to be in this plane. And if you are in the correct location, this artery would be slightly lifted up. So that is another indication that you are depositing the drug in the correct plane. So here you can see we've placed the probe in the for the supraguinal approach. You identify the anterior inferior iliac spine. Just above that, you have the iliacus muscle. Here I'm moving caudad. So this is your sartorius muscle when you're moving towards the foot end. As I move towards the head end, you can identify your internal oblique muscle. And you can see this pulsatile artery here. Here, you can see the movement of the peritoneum, the gut movement. And you can identify your deep circumflex iliac artery just above the fascia iliaca compartment. So this is your bow tie sign, which you see formed by the sartorius and the internal oblique. And this is your area of interest, the fascia iliaca compartment. Now, important thing to remember is this entire thing is your fascia iliaca compartment. Now, where do you actually deposit the drug? In which part of the fascia iliaca compartment? One thing is identify the deep circumflex artery, which should be specifically sought while administering the drug as it provides a landmark superficial to the correct plane. And it secondly, it can be damaged by incorrect needle advancement. The second thing, important thing is a needle enters from the foot end towards the head end, from caudal to cranial. So your needle would be coming from here towards the head end. The important thing to remember is the local anesthetic should be placed in this part of the fascia iliaca compartment and not here. So it should be placed cranial to the point where your iliacus muscle is passing under the abdominal muscle. It should not be placed at this part where your iliacus muscle is under the sartorius muscle. Why this is important is when you're placing the drug here above the pelvic brim in the part of above the part of the iliacus muscle, which is passing under the abdominal muscle. When you're depositing the drug here, most of it would remain trapped within the pelvis and there would be no spill back to the thigh. So the advantage of this would be there would be a better spread to all the three nerves. And secondly, all your drug would reach the nerves before your articular branches take off. So this is important to keep in mind. So this is another video showing how the block is being given. So the needle is entering. This is the Foot end, this is the head end. You're entering from the foot end towards the head end. Here you can see the deep circumflex iliac artery. So we're going just below that plane of the artery. And you can see the unzipping, the iliacus muscle going down, and the local anesthetic is deposited here. So you're creating a good potential space.
the artery is being lifted up and you can see a nice spread of local anesthetic just above the iliacus and below the artery. Now, what is the adequate volume of local anesthetic that we need? This was a study which was conducted by Vermilion et al. to see the effect of volume of supraingoinal injected solution on the spread of injected. And they found that combining the CT and dissection findings, the authors suggested a volume to reach the femoral nerve, the obturator and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. You require around 40 ml of local anesthetic for adequate spread to all the three nerves. Now, at our institute, commonly, I, especially in patients with the fractures, we also place catheters in the facial iliaca compartment. And we've seen that once we place catheters and keep them in the post-operative period and give analgesia through that, it provides a very good pain relief for around 48 hours, 48 to 72 hours. So this is a video of showing how we are placing a catheter. So once we've injected uh, the local anesthetic and created a potential space, the needle is withdrawn. And through this, now we are inserting the catheter in the fascia iliaca compartment. You need to maintain good asepsis, especially when you're injecting catheters. So now through the catheter, we're giving the drug. Yeah, you can see this catheter within the space, nicely placed. And a good potential space has been created in the facial iliac compartment. Now, once the catheter is placed, we do tunneling in the skin and fix the catheters. The tunneling is done so that the catheters do not get dislodged. So once the tunneling is done, we properly bandage and strap the uh, catheter and the filter to its adequate place and uh, keep a watch and adequately label it as to when it was inserted. And through this, the drugs can be given. So the facial lacquer compartment blocks, like I said in the beginning, are very easy blocks. And these have been emerging as the block of choice and can be safely administered under ultrasound guidance, even in acute settings and have been commonly used for hip and femur fractures. This was a meta-analysis which we did in our institute uh, to see evaluate the role of the facial lacquer block in hip fractures in the emergency department. And we found that it is associated with significant pain relief, both at rest and on movement, lasting for up to four hours, as well as reduction in opioid requirement in patients with hip fractures. This was another study uh, which compared the analgesic efficacy of ultrasound-guided supraingoinal facial iliac compartment with the infraingoinal block. And they reported lower consumption of rescue analgesic and lower post-operative pain scores for up to 24 hours with the supraingoinal approach. So what are the important things which we need to remember? Important thing to remember is that in the facial plane blocks, the local anesthetic is not injected in the vicinity of the nerves, but in the intermuscular plane where the targeted nerves have their anatomical course. So again, I would like to re-emphasize in all plane blocks, facial plane blocks, volume is of paramount importance as large volumes of local anesthetics are necessary to obtain sufficient spread necessary to block the targeted nerves. Then the needle placement in the correct intermuscular plane is equally important to obtain a successful block. Reducing the concentration of local anesthetic must be considered to reduce the risk of local anesthetic systemic toxicity whenever you are injecting these large volumes. So to conclude, facial lacquer block is a very simple, safe, efficient block for providing pain relief. The ultrasound-guided supraingoinal approach appears to be the most effective at achieving successful block of all the three nerves. 
Although technically it may be slightly more challenging to perform as compared to the infraguinal approach. However, the ultrasound availability of ultrasound has greatly made improved the resolution and ease of operation and made our life much more easier and the blocks much more safer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.